people have no symptoms because of atrial fibrillation. Their first symptom might be when they come in with right-sided weakness or slurred speech or an inability to talk because of a stroke. Sometimes their symptoms are very subtle, very vague, and they get fatigue and they can't understand why they're tired some days and not others, and that might be their symptom of atrial fibrillation. But atrial fibrillation is a rapid irregular rhythm in the upper chamber of the heart, and ordinarily in sinus rhythm, which is the rhythm we were all born in, the upper chambers or the atria squeeze and contribute to the filling of the lower chambers, the ventricles, which then pump the blood throughout the body. And that happens at rest, usually 60 or 70 times a minute. Upper chamber squeezes, lower chamber pumps, and the heart works in a very efficient way. Atrial fibrillation is a rapid, irregular rhythm in that upper chamber, where instead of squeezing in a coordinated, orderly fashion 60 times a minute, the upper chamber instead is quivering and shaking, and it's activating about 400 times per minute. When it does that, there are some consequences. When the upper chamber is quivering rather than squeezing, it's not filling the lower chamber the way it should, so the heart operates less efficiently as a pump. On top of that, the heart rate tends to be much faster than it should be, making the heart less efficient as a pump. And then the cadence of the rhythm is off. Rather than being smooth and consistent, which is efficient, like a well-oiled machine, it becomes chaotic and irregular and having atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke five times normal. Now when that upper chamber is quivering, blood flow through a little portion of the left atrium becomes stagnant and then clot can form, breaking free, leading to a stroke. Now, oftentimes people have symptoms for years before they're diagnosed. They'll have palpitations that last a minute or five minutes or ten minutes and they go see their doctor but they do the EKG in the office and the rhythm's normal and they're told that maybe they have an anxiety disorder or maybe it's a panic attack. And then three months later the AFib comes back and again it's short-lived and they rush to the emergency room but by the time they get in the parking lot it stops and their EKG is normal. People can go on like that for five years or 10 years. AFib is generally progressive, which means over time the episodes last longer and then the episodes can become persistent. And so at that time when they become longer, people finally get it diagnosed by getting an EKG in their regular doctor's office or an EKG in the emergency room. Blood thinning medicines are the most important treatment for stroke prevention. To control the symptoms of atrial fibrillation, sometimes we just use medicines that slow the heart rate down, like metoprolol or toprol. Sometimes we use more potent medicines like amiodarone to keep the heart in normal rhythm, and other times we do procedures like catheter ablation to eliminate the atrial fibrillation. If it's impairing your quality of life, there's probably something we can do to make that better. There's a dozen different treatment options, uh, from simple things to very complicated things, and one choice isn't right for everybody, but if your symptoms are impairing your quality of life, we can probably help.